Bay Area, it's Draymond Green. And you're listening to Willard and Dibs on 95.7 The Game. <laughs> That's perfect, Grandy. Like, just the sound of his voice. What's that do to you? What's it do? Give me the emotion right now. Hey, Bay Area, this is Draymond Green. Oh, God. Bay Area, it's Draymond Green. There you go. And you're listening to Willard and Dibs on 95.7 The Game. It makes me feel like it's been a nice break. <laughs> you know, I needed my space from him, and he oh. needed his space from me. And you know what? How was LeBron's birthday party? Because uh, it sure looked like you had a good time. Oh, do- you're not one of these people. No, I am. Why? Why does it make people angry when people live their lives? Why are you judging me and I'm not angry? I didn't judge you. I asked you a question. And the answer is, it's bad optics. You you can't bother yeah. yourself to come to the o- to your own facility and... Be a part of your team you don't know that. and work on your game with your team. We know that he hasn't been there with, with Steve with and the, the boys. Team. I don't even know if he was invited. He was invited to LeBron's. Sure. And so he went. It's it's bad we optics. Know. It's bad optics. I, and- I, I have a hard time every time an athlete is like not not supposed to be at the game. It's like Odell Beckham on the boat. Oh, you should be uh practicing right now. I'm sorry, round the clock? Like You can't take a bye week and go on a boat? You can do what you want, you can't but when you come to, out and you lose you the next see, week? You can't see your friend? You can do whatever you want. When you're suspended? It's As a fan, you have the right to look at something that an athlete does off the court and have a feeling about it. And when Odell oh, Beckham boy. Jr. goes shirtless on a boat and then they come out and they lose the next week, you can, as a fan, you can look at that and be frustrated. You're allowed to do whatever you want as a fan. I would offer to that fan this question. What evidence do you have that being on a boat 10 days prior has anything to do with the result of a forthcoming football game? It has nothing to do with evidence. It has only to do with feeling. And my feeling as a fan is if you weren't on a boat shirtless, if you were, you know, behind the scenes in a weight room or I don't know, (laughs) With your laptop going uh-huh. over the game plan, yeah. if you were working on your hands in a jugs machine, if I had saw a video of that, of you at you know, it's 2 a.m. and Odell Beckham right. Jr. is on the jugs machine and he's catching balls and catching balls, and then you go out and you lose, as a fan, I'd be like, you know what? You did all you could. You put in the work, OBJ. You did what you could, and darn it, you came it, up on the losing end. It's optics. It's ironic. That it's optics. When this conversation started, you said, don't judge me. That's ironic. <laughs> you, I mean, you can judge yeah, me all you want. Liter- I mean, that's what we do as fans. I don't let the Niners know. Hey, Niners, no playing around these next two weeks. Don't you? Oh no, it's all judgment. Don't as a fan. you go out? I don't even want to see you at the grocery store. I want you at home with a book and glasses and jugs machines. Right. So if that's it, if Brock Purdy comes out and he doesn't play this weekend. And then he has a bye. Mm-hmm. And then he comes out in the playoff game and he looks bad and they lose. Are we not allowed to, to, to look at Kyle Shanahan and say, you know what, Kyle, maybe you should have played him that's a com- little bit? That's completely different than it's what we're exactly talking about. It's exactly the same. No, no, the, it's judgment. No, the comp would be Brock went to Mexico next week and was on the beach with his lady and then comes out and throws an interception. And we go, well, it's because he went to Mexico and was on the beach. Sure. That's just odd to me. That's very funny yeah. to me. I don't I like it's almost like the way we look at fantasy football. You know what I mean? Like, do you think that I take from winning this league this year that I did something? You think I did that? You even pointed it out. I ended up having the top waiver priority when Puka Nakua right. uh, introduced himself to the world, and so I got him, and so I won. That's called luck. <laughs> It hasn't. Did you put in a claim for Puka Nakua? Yes, I did. So you did something. Because I also put <laughs> well, in a claim for Puka Nakua. I'd like to pat myself on the back then. Right, but why did I get him? Because of some cockamamie <laughs> league run by a Luck. half-wit commissioner. It's not cockamamie. It's the same rule that every league uses. But anyway. Untrue, it's, but it's go I, ahead. No, it isn't because I picked later than you in the draft. Right, but normally after the first week, 
uh, you know, whoever's in last would get the first pick. Well, but who's in last? It's one week. The half the right, whoever, one. whoever lost and yeah. has the fewest points would be in last. Which I don't think was you. And it wasn't you. It, it might have been me. It wasn't you either. Because I lost my <laughs> seven of my first eight. Right. But anyway. Anyway, let's go to the phone. here nor there. Let's go to the phone. Uh, let's go to Brian in uh, Gilroy. It's Willard and Dibbs. Glad you're with us. Um, obviously, oh, you know what, Brian, stand by, because I promised the, uh, I promised the, well, no, I promised the Bob Meyer sound, and I don't want anybody to arrive at their destination and be like, that freaking Willard <laughs> said he was going to play the Bob Myers, and now I got to go inside, I got a doctor appointment. No, 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 here's the Bob Myers. Look, they don't know what they are. Without him, he's the fulcrum, and Draymond Green is such a good defensive player and has been such a great leader. That's been tested lately, and there's a void. I mean, that's the truth. There's a void without him. Six and four, I don't think that's real. I don't. I think that's a little bit of a mirage. I don't think they think they're on to something without Draymond Green. He's good enough to make any team a good defensive team. So without him, they're, they're what, a 16th, 17th in the league in defense. He's always made the Warriors a good defensive team. The hard thing with these things is um, when a player goes through something like this or a team, and I was there for many distractions. I mean, you guys covered all of them. It's just hard. It takes energy. It takes energy to deal with these things. It takes energy to have to lose a player for a limit, for amount of time, to bring him back into the fold. Steve Kerr's trying to figure out the rotations. And when Draymond gets back, that kind of all starts over again. Uh, Steph has had to try to figure out the reliance of Curry on Draymond is something we all know and know well. Mm -hmm. So and then he loses him and says, okay, I gotta figure out how to play with CP, which CP's graded it. But it's something that has caused, in many ways, a period of time where it's just a great amount of uncertainty. And now they gotta come back when he comes back, when that is, yeah. and figure it out again. And it's just exhausting. That's the hard part of it. A lot of time left. Um, they've been in a ton of games, 25 clutch games. I don't know if that's Most good or bad. Yeah, yeah. Not where they want to be. Uh, Steve Kerr's still trying to get it right. Steph Curry's still, I believe, probably the best leader in sports. So he's going to keep him on the path. But um, you just got to get Draymond back as soon as you can and then plug him in and see what you can do. First thing I want to do, we got all kinds of reaction there, but I want to shout out Veggie Delight on YouTube because I love this comment. It's weird listening to Bob talk from the outside. I, I want to acknowledge that. It is. It's really odd to hear Bob Meyer's voice speaking about the Warriors as if they're them. They, yeah, those people over there, and him analyzing what's going on. That's still, I'm not, I'm not there yet. Yeah, they are them, <laughs> and uh, I'm happy for him because he's, uh, man, he made it through. He's chilling. Four titles, yep. and uh, you know, you go to Bristol or you go to ESPN, wherever they are, wherever he needs to be, and you come home, and you don't have to worry about, hey, Bob. Uh, so Draymond. I mean, he choked out Gobert. What do you think? And, hey, Bob, when's Draymond coming back? Hey, Bob, hey, Bob. There's no more hey, Bob. No. Bob is chilling. No, there's just, hey, Bob, what do you think of this mess going on with the Warriors? Right. That's it. And it's interesting what he said because uh, Kevin O'Connor and Lucas uh, shared this from the ringer in terms of their defense, and the defensive rating with Steph and Draymond together is actually worse than when Draymond's not on the floor. So it's very close to being... The same, but Draymond Green's not the same defender that he used to be. So in terms of Bob's comments and, you know, all the fans who want to talk about Draymond and what he brings to the team, I think that it's largely a history channel take more than it is current day take. Yeah, but I, I, I He's think, not the same player he was. No, even if everyone acknowledges that, I don't think that anyone thinks the Warriors are just flat a better basketball team without him. That's different. I understand what you're saying. Right. He, he can be not what he was, and he can still be better than what the Warriors are, especially defensively, without him. I, I, I'm more focused on the, the one thing that Bob said, like – you know, in the weeds about defensive rating and whatnot is is one thing. Uh, but I, I look at what Bob's saying, which I think is a, a more view from 10,000 feet. They they don't know who they are without him. And, and this is something we've literally, on this show, listened to Steve Kerr work through on a daily basis, which is, so we're going to just, like, figure out who our closing five is that night. And uh, Moody is not in the rotation, but he will be. He was, and he will be, right. but he's not. Right. And Jonathan wasn't, and then he was. And then we put him in, and it was good, so he stayed. But if he's not good, maybe he won't. Like, this, my God, this man is showing up at the arena, and it feels like he's putting a blindfold on and hucking darts. 
They haven't a clue who they are. But that's not solely Draymond related. Of, of course and not. And I would argue that, that the helps. Draymond piece is a very small part of it. I think a bigger piece is Kavon's regression, Andrew Wiggins' uh, current state of oh, yeah. not being a real playable guy for the most part. I think those are bigger pieces than Draymond or no Draymond. I think he's got bigger issues in terms of who do I even play? GP2, he'd love to play. He's hurt. Draymond's unavailable. Wiggins is not very good. And Kevon Looney, it looks like he's turned into a 47-year-old overnight. I mean, it's so, well, he's always looked like a 47-year-old. No, but he's, but he's now, now he's moving like, like it, yeah. Oh, what is going on there? Statuesque. Um, okay, we promised Brian, and, uh, and, and so now let's do it. Let's hi, do it. Hi, Brian and Gilroy. How you doing? What's up? Brian. How you doing, fellas? Ew. Enjoy listening to your show every day. Thanks much. Hello. 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 We, we got you. Are you there? Yep. Go ahead. Right on. Enjoy enjoy listening to you guys every day. Thank you. I wanted to chime in on this whole Draymond topic that I've been listening to like everybody else for the last couple of weeks. And my take on it, I'm going to jump in there with Dibs. And my attraction to watching the Warriors, because of the Draymond distraction, I can say as a lifelong Warriors fan, has diminished to the point where the minute – I see him step on the court. The clock begins to tick to when the next technical or distraction is going to occur because of Draymond's focus on himself as opposed to the team and the game to where I think it's become hard for the younger players to look at Draymond for any kind of advice or direction because I feel like his distraction and his potential distraction coming back has become an overriding focus or potential where these younger players, I think, are probably more looking away than looking at them. Okay, this is interesting. Brian, what, what if we asked you this? What's your goal for the Warriors this year? You know, I thought about it while you guys had on the break, and I would go back to what I used to hear Gary Radnich say on a daily basis, which is covers a lot of topics, which is when people rely on these athletes, these highly paid athletes for anything other than entertainment, you're putting them in a position that one, they're not deserving of two. They were not put in that position for, they were put in that position to play a sport, which in turn creates entertainment. So what I've tried to do, along with that statement that I you know, heavily put value in, is I don't care or put value in what they do off the court because they're being paid for what they do on the court or the field or the racetrack or wherever their venue is. And if they don't perform in that arena, that's where, to me, the value for a fan comes into play where the fan's allowed to judge, which in a most you know, areas you're not, I don't think, should judge. But I think when they step on the court or step on the field and they're getting paid huge amounts of money, they also, along with that amount of money, put themselves in the public eye to be judged. Okay, that no, that's an interesting answer. But, but Brian, do you care if they win? Oh, I, I immensely care if they win. That's why I watch. Okay, so that, to me, and that's what I, where I'm, I'm sort of targeting today is that's the rub. The, the, the rub is, again, we're all allowed to answer this question however we want. It's like being in kindergarten when they go, what's your favorite color? There's no wrong answer here. And the entertainment side of it, the judgment side of it, the money, I get all of that, and I thought that that was very well stated. But what is at odds right now to me is the fact that I think the Warriors – are more likely to win games when Draymond is on the court as opposed to not. And if you also buy into that premise, then you should want him there. Unless you want to go into a much more sort of complex environment, which maybe you do, and, and if you think that, that your desire for them to win is outweighed by the development of the future and the relationship with Trace Jackson Davis and Brandon Pajemski and Pakipski Kid and all of the players that are on the team now. If you want to do that, that's fine. But if you just dumb it down for a second and go, Warriors better with 
Yes. Okay. Then, in my opinion, you should want him there. See, I don't think that that is a universal belief any longer. Totally fine. And I, I don't think that the, the chasm between better with or better without, I think that that gap is much more narrow than ever before. Maybe. Because of how he plays, how he carries on, and the players behind him who are coming in now and playing. So it's easy to say, are they better with him or better without him? Well, yeah, they've been better with him. But right now, are they better with him or better without him? Because remember, if he plays like he normally does when he's available and it's 30 minutes a night, that means less Kaminga. And when there's less Kaminga, you know you get bad Kaminga. Kaminga's only good when Kaminga's able to, to start and play a lot. And TJD has come in and now been a real part of the of the rotation. And maybe he still plays because Kavon Looney's fallen out of favor. And maybe Draymond takes Kavon's minutes. And you play with, with Draymond and Kaminga and TJD as your bigs. And maybe Kavon becomes a DNP guy. 